Hello and welcome to the penultimate reveal for the Great Dark Beyond. Today it is Shaman, and oh boy do they have a card coming up that is going to create content, let's put it that way. Uh, but first, we are going to start off with the other legendary of the set, Farseer Nabundo. 5 mana 6 for Draini. Death Rattle, open the galaxy's lens. It absorbs the power of the next spell you cast, and the galaxy's lens is a location. Comes in as a 5 mana location with 2 uses, and has spell burst, absorb the spell's power. Okay, so this card is cut from a similar cloth to something like Sheriff Barrelbrim or Rooney Time Explorer from the Caverns in Time. As in, this is a minion that opens up a location, and that location is... Normally better than like the average location you put in your deck. It basically creates a hoop that you have to jump through before you can get this location. Uh, Barrel Brim also has a restriction that you have to be below 20 health. But actually that restriction for certain decks, aka Pain Warlock, wasn't too bad a thing. And actually also Pain Priest runs this card as well. And the card is pretty good with the Badlands Jail in it. I don't know if Rooney did anything into Wild. So Rooney came out into Twist when it was like the brand new hotness. I don't think it saw any play in like the first season of Twist, or whatever you want to call it. And then Twist went like off the rails pretty quickly, so... Uh, I don't know if Rooney ever really saw any play, but that's kind of by the by. Now, I, I should probably explain how this card works, by the way, in just case you're wondering how it works. When you get the Galaxy Lens on the field and you cast a spell, the Galaxy Lens will spell burst it, and the location will become that spell that you cast. So ideally, you want to cast a very heavy spell with the Galaxy's Lens, because then you get to cheat it out for nothing. You just push the location, obviously you have to wait for, a turn for it to cycle back up again, and then you get it back up again. And you can get another free use of the spell, so it's basically two free uses of the spell that you've just cast over the course of, you know, well, how many turns you want it to be, but the minimum three turns. I will say this card has got a disadvantage compared to Barrel Brim and Rooney in the fact that it is a Death Rattle, Often cards that have some big value associated with a Death Rattle haven't been performing particularly well recently in Hearthstone. For example, Raden and Therizane have not been performing particularly well. Uh, and that is just because Battle Cry, you get it immediately. Death Rattle, you have to wait for like some other event to happen, aka the minion dies. And sometimes that can happen on your turn if you can trigger your own Death Rattle, which for Shaman is actually pretty awkward. On your opponent's turn, if they're kind enough to kill it, or you're going to have to wait for your turn to come back around again and hope that you have a nice trade for the Farsi and Nabundo to die. I will say it started quite nicely, though, for doing some sort of trade. It is a 6-4, so it's got a pretty decent chance of trading into some minion around the mid-range of the game and just dying in the process. Uh, but not guaranteed, so there is some, like, play around it. Also, hard to interrupt Battlecry type effects, because, again, it happens instantaneously on your turn. Death Rattles, you're always are susceptible to a card being poofed away, getting bounced, getting stolen. So, yeah, Farsi has those disadvantages, but the card itself is very, very solid. Uh, going to actually the Galaxy Lens portion of this card, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Grey Sage Parrot back in Big Spell Mage of the Past. Uh, Grey Sage Parrot, once you cast a big spell, it would then repeat it, you know, when you played the minion. And that card saw a lot of play in, uh, big spell mage in the past and was a very good card in that deck. Galaxy's Lens is kind of the same thing. You want to cast like your big spell. It doesn't have to be a big spell though, but you probably want it to be a, a heavier spell to get more mana cheap from the, the location. And instantaneously, you can just push that button again and get a, effectively a double cast of the spell on that turn. And then down the line later on, for free, you get another cast of the spell. So... Yeah, it has got great, great, great Sage Parrot vibes. Similar to something as well like Chatty McCall, which isn't really seeing any play right now in Hunter. But I think conceivably could also be a good card that copies a spell. It's just that Hunter right now doesn't have a lot of good spells that target enemies, unfortunately. Uh, other things this reminds me a little bit of is the Relic Vault, which was back in uh, Relic Demon Hunter. And this duplicated only your Relic spells, and all your Relics were spells. That deck never really got to your, like, tier 1 range. And I'd probably argue that it didn't get reached tier 2 range either. It's, like, around, like, a good tier 3 deck. But there were turns that if you could live through the early game and you could get off your Relic Vaults where you cast the double... I've got what it's called now, but you got the double minions from it that scaled every time you cast a Relic. 
Boy, did you get some crazy stat lines from this thing. So I expect the Galaxy's Runs to do something fairly similar. Also, it requires a little bit less wind-up than the Relic Vault, albeit a hurdle more to get the location out than the Relic Vault did. Uh, another card to compare this to as well is Solar Eclipse. This is a card that saw play in Druid. The next spell that you cast this turn casts twice. There was various things that Druids did with this. Often they used it to draw tons of cards, to be completely honest with you. Sometimes they would try and use it as some sort of OTK tool, a tool or just to survive with a lot of armor. Galaxy's Lens can kind of just fill the, the niche of Solar Eclipse. You even can, like... We spells in between the situation, right? Solar Crypts, you had to do the, the next spell. So it was Solar Crypts, another spell. You couldn't do anything in between. Galaxy's Lens, you can play the spell you want to be duplicated. You can play a different spell, and then you can open the, the, the lens and fire off that spell again. So it has some more flexibility than Solar Crypts, but as I said, more hoops to jump through to get to it. Now, as I've kind of been alluding to, you really want to get some big spells. And Shaman has some big spells, but not a, a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, Wish Upon a Star is probably their biggest spell, which gives plus two, plus three to all minions in your hand deck and battlefield. Would that not be fantastic to cast it and then get it cast again? And then three turns later, or two turns later, sorry, again. That's going to make all your minions ginormous. And Shaman has some pretty good cards. Actually, Shaman's probably one of my favorite classes right now. They have lots of incredibly good and fun cards to play with. So, yeah, you could potentially make some big deck buff. Shaman deck with Wish Upon a Star and Galaxy Lens. You could also put, like, a really threatening situation up with the Giant Tumbleweed, for example. You cast Giant Tumbleweed while, uh, Tumbleweed while Galaxy Lens is on the field. It remembers the Giant Tumbleweed, and then your opponent always knows that... If you put a board down, you're going to get Galaxy Lens and it's just going to get wiped away. It kind of reminds me of the situation with Puppet Theater into Control Priest matchups, where you get into a situation where you can't play certain minions because the priest will just steal them, and them playing the card after you effectively counters the card, a bit like a Yogg type situation. So it could do an equivalent type of thing for Shaman with a big spell rather than a minion instead. Uh, there's then some like lesser options. I don't think this would see any play, by the way, but matching outfits, which has actually not seen any play so far, becomes a lot more a lot more amenable when you can matching outfit a minion, get a copy of it after it evolves, and then you can also get the option of evolving it again. Like if one of the options, or I say one of the options, if the option you get ends up being really bad and you have to do something about it, you can at least evolve it away from that, or you can evolve one of them away from that and potentially get a bit more value that way. There's then some like very small spell options, which I, I don't think, again, are going to be the greatest options, but maybe if you're running this as a, a card in the Highlander deck, for example, you're going to be running lots of spell spells of different costs. If you can hit a Thrall's Gift on Galaxy Lens, you've kind of locked three spells into the Galaxy's Lens, because I assume that when you push the location to use the spell you'll get a option to discover a temporary lightning storm hex or bloodlust and your opponent will always know that you have these three options to deal with whatever they can do uh, and that'd be pretty annoying you could also put cards in there to set up for example like maybe you have a, con a conductivity combo deck but you need like 12 mana throw a conductivity into your galaxy's lens don't worry about it too much and then when you get your combo ready you just press on the location because there's not a lot of people running cards that remove locations reno aside uh but other than reno you've got a pretty good chance that this conductivity is going to get locked into the location and you can play it later on with like whatever setup you have for three charge minions to smoke your opponent's face i don't know by the way if that combo actually exists but if it does then you can make it easy to set up with the galaxy's lens finally Tourists exist. You could go into Demon Hunter and throw in a cliff dive into this deck and become like a big shaman deck where you're just trying to cheat out all these ginormous minions in your deck. You cliff dive, you cliff dive again. Get four of these guys. Assume they have like some sort of death rattle on them also. You might be able to fill a board with it that way. Do I think that will work? Probably not. I don't think there is a, a good enough list right now for big minion shaman deck. Uh, also, just a note to this, by the way. Hunter is another class that uh, Shaman can now actually tour us into thanks to the mini set. And there are some pretty good Hunter spells as well, especially if we ever get into a situation where spaceships become strong. Getting multiple copies of Death Roll is 
a pretty good way to single target remove a minion and also keep putting pressure on your opponent's face if they put any big boy on the board you're going to eat that damage at some point so again it's going to make your opponent not want to play certain cards and that's very unfun to play into as the opponent as you you feel like a genius uh, furious fouls becomes even more spooky when you're getting out uh, four of these guys which works out as 12 12 birds with a moon while attacking that's pretty good for like six mana it is six mana you know plus five mana and working up to that situation but it's pretty spooky to get that situation on the board and i also monkey business which was in the the mini set as well if you cast a monkey business it goes into your galaxy's lens you could then just push the galaxy lens assuming you have a minion on the board by the way and your other monkey business that gets cast from the galaxy's lens will feed all the bananas to the minions on the board because your hand will be full and then ideally you'll remove one card from your hand so you don't overdraw it is funny some sort of value-ish shaman deck and i'm all about that lifestyle by the way there are other things you could do with this I, like you're honestly just thinking too small right now all i've been talking about are spells unsurprisingly what about minions that generate spells what about marion for example i know the treasures were nerfed recently or one of them was the best one it's still really good to get another use of draw three cards reduce the cost by three it's still really good to get two random legendary minions and one of them that goes into your hand like it's it's a really really solid thing to get put into marin so again if you're running this highlander shaman deck this is definitely a card that you could just splash into there and you're gonna get some sort of value from it you're like guaranteed to get some sort of value maybe not as like constructive and like comboish as you might want but eventually if you can generate enough value you can beat a lot of decks uh gorgon zormu as well you keep getting this cheese staggering up and up and up eventually get it to a point where it's like back breaking amounts of value you cast the cheese with the galaxy lens on the board and the cheese gets locked into the lens which means you're going to get three uses of this in total and you potentially could put this on the board at the same time as the other cheese like you could get six ginormous minions at one time and then get three big ones later on down the road uh, by the way i don't think the cheese would take up in the galaxy's lens i think it has to be in your hand so that does require a bit of setting up you'd have to play gorgon's army well in advance but fortunately it's a three mana minion and there's a pretty good chance you will have played that in advance and it'll just be sitting in your hair hand the cheese aging beautifully uh fizzle fizzle generates a spell what if you copy the snapshot onto the galaxy's lens for actually too much value to be honest with you an unrealistic amount of value that you would never ever need you take a snapshot of something like really important like a reno for example or a yog you know uh what, what else the, the titan from shaman whose name's escaping me just all good stuff and you draw the snapshot you play the snapshot at some point to give you those cards back and you galaxy you have it stored in the galaxy lens for the end of the game where you're in this control v control matchup and they're like holy shit i'm running out of cards they will probably play their kill jaden by that point but i'm running out of cards and then you're like haha galaxy's lens and you just draw these huge back-breaking cards like so important so impactful honestly I, I i think it's unlikely you're gonna need this but in some matchups that's gonna matter zephyrus as well you can generate any number of spells it is somewhat more random than the other options but you can generate stuff like blizzard or mind control would you like a blizzard on the galaxy's lens yeah if you want to lock down your opponent's board for three turns that's a pretty good deal same with mind control do you want to steal three opposing minions over the course of the next few turns uh if yes then that's a pretty good option for you now you do have to spend nine minutes on the first mind control but there are ways to get around that as well one final thing about farsi and nabundo he's a drain eye as well which means he works with drain eye support aka stuff like velen or the astral vigilant if you want to get another one of these back or ace wayfinder and more importantly if you're trying to be, play big spells it works with lunar trailblazer and lunar trailblazer could take one of these big spells and reduce it down to five or less if you can reduce the cost of lunar trailblazer by some other means we'll get back to that in a moment though uh, also worth mentioning that a lot of the Draenei are battle cry cards 
And Shaman has access to multiple Battlecry locations in the form of Fairy Tail Forest, which also reduces them by one, which in the case of Luna Trailblazer means you discount the spell to four mana instead. So that is a combo wombo. Uh, also, if you Taurus into Hunter, you can get Parrot Sanctuary, which means, again, you get another one cost reduction on your next Battlecry card, which maybe takes Luna down to three. Now we're talking about some mana discount, right? Uh, and after you play Battlecry Minion, you can reopen it to reduce the cost again. I see I see a world where this Battlecry Draenei big spell shaman deck is a thing. But you might need more convincing. How about Nebula? A big, big spell. Nine mana arcane shaman spell. Discover two eight cost minions to summon with taunt and elusive. Wow. That is a big amount of stats for the cost. Bearing in mind that a an eight mana minion and you get to discover it so you're not getting necessarily the worst option you're probably going to get one that is better than average at least unless you get really screwed on the discover Let, let's say that is an eight mana ish effect now i, I do appreciate most of my battle cry so it's probably not true taunt and elusive adds about a mana to it so it's almost like saying discover two nine cost minions to some degree for nine mana that's Potentially like a nine mana mana cheat. Now, I, I don't think that's how it'll work out in the wash, but it's still really big cheat. Like, at the very least, stats alone, you're probably getting like a seven mana discount on playing a Nebula. Really, really insane. Kind of reminds me a lot of Drakefire Amulet, which, by the way, was also in the old version of Big Spell Mage. That was a ten mana fire spell that had a tradable, discovered two dragons to summon them. And often dragons were around this eight to, you know, I think, the biggest ones were like 10 mana at the time possibly even bigger actually maybe there was some stupid dragons that could be discounted more but certainly to 10 mana and more often than not you would get some huge stat line with the drake fire amulet and you would basically win the game especially if you could cheat this out early and play it for like five mana instead so to speak then this was backbreaking a bit like playing tsunamis on turn five nowadays is also pretty backbreaking for most decks uh, that was true in the past with Drake Fire Amulet. Now, going back to the Galaxy Lens, obviously this is a fantastic big spell to put in the Galaxy's Lens. If you play a Nebula with the Lens on the board and you push the button again, you're getting four eight-cost minions with Taunt and Elusive. That is a big wall that a lot of decks will just not be able to get over. Elusive means you can't single target them with spells, which is very frustrating. Part of the reason why Unkill X was really frustrated to play against was Elusive. And if you're an aggro deck, you can't get through the big wall of taunt. So if you could cheat this, let's say to five mana as the drain, I can do it. And you put this down on like around five, you're probably going to break the back of most aggro decks. They simply won't have an answer to something like a nebula, especially a nebula with a galaxy's lens on top. It's just bottom right. As I alluded to, Lunar Trailblazer seems like the most sensible option. There are ways to discount this card as well. We talked about with the, the locations for Battlecry. And you could easily see a world where you're playing this Nebula around turn 5. And that is going to be really upsetty spaghetti for most decks. Kind of like playing King Tide into Tsunami is right now. It's very upsetty spaghetti when someone Tsunamis on turn 5. And then copies the Tsunami again. And then copies the Tsunami again. It's that type of value. It's just instead of a Tsunami, a King Tide, and the, the Con Man, it's Lunar Trailblazer, a Nebula, and the uh, the other Draenei, whose name's already escaped me, the, the Lens card. It is harder to set that up than the, the big Spell Mage, but it, it could work as well. Also worth noting, it isn't just the Draenei that can do a discount. Uh, Cabaret Headliner exists in Shaman right now, and this is an Arcane spell. So you could get a two mana discount on it with just Cabaret Headliner. I think Nebula at seven would definitely see play in standard. Without any mana discounts on Nebula at nine, I think you're probably in the realms of it's too slow, but at seven, you have a realistic chance of, as a mid-range deck, living till then and putting this on the board down against an aggro deck and that would just break that back. So uh, not completely crazy. There's also Jazz Base if there was like an overload support, which by the way is kind of a hint that there are some overload cards coming. Uh, potentially if you could play a deck full of overloads and some of these big spell shaman support cards, you might be able to break your Jazz Bass and just take the Nebula down to like a zero mana spell in its own right. I'll just do this big huge churn of mana cheat. It does require you to do overloading during the course of the game. There's not a lot of great overload cards and overload support right now in Shaman, but it's not terrible, not terrible. 
Uh, also worth noting again that they can go into Hunter, so you can Sasqualk this thing. And finally, if you want something really, really spicy, and you want to put this in your Highlander Shaman deck, for example, you could hit this with Hagatha, because it is obviously a spell that costs more than five. Turn it into a Slime, which gives it a battle cry of casting the Debula, and then you can do a Shudder Block on it. In which case, if you play, you know, the mini Shudder Block plus the Nebula minion, it's a 10 mana combo, you filled the board with, I say to fill the board, six of the board slots are going to be filled with eight eights, eight eights, eight cost minions, sorry, which probably is around about an eight eight stat line, with Taunt Elusive, and then you have one, one, one mini. Uh, that's pretty spooky for a lot of decks. It's basically deal with this or you're going to die. Some decks can obviously deal with it around 10, but. Maybe, if you're throwing enough value at them, again, this could break their back eventually. If that wasn't enough, we have actually got some more big spell support. It's Cosmonaut. A 7-mana 5-5 Draenei Battlecry. Discover a spell from your deck. Reduce its cost by 5. Wow, that's a huge amount of discount on a... a just an anything, to be honest with you. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Cecily, which was a legendary, by the way, that drew a minion from your deck on a death rattle, and you reduce its cost by 8. Cecily didn't end up seeing that much play, I think in part because Big Druid was a thing, like Big Ramp Druid with Guff and stuff was around that time. And there were just simply more unfair things that Druid could do than triggering a Death Rattle on the Cecily to get a big mana discount under the minion. Simply put, it was better to ramp with Guff than to hope for Cecily and combo into something else. Cosmonaut, you don't get the 8 mana discount. However... You do get to have a battle cry, you get to discover a spell, and it comes up one turn earlier, so it's not completely crazy. And also, uh, I was going to say, it depends on the deck de descriptions, but you can also use this sort of like as a tutor, as long as you're only running big spells in your deck, which is something that is more amenable to do than just run only big minions. It does depend on the, the class, I suppose, but... Uh, I think that was one of the issues of Cecily, that it was pretty hard for Druid to just run bigger things and stay alive. Cosmonaut, in a big spell Shaman deck, you're probably going to be able to run a lot of cheap minions to keep you alive until you can get to these ginormous spells. Uh, at which point you can then start discounting them and getting more value. Uh, also, just looking at this card, what would you pay for 5-5 five, five stat lines? It's at least a 4-mana-ish like stat line. The Discover a Spell from your deck is Thrive in the Shadows, which is a card that sees play nowadays. Not a lot, I will say. It's normally like one of those cards you put into the 30th card in your deck. But it's certainly something that when, you know, Lol Priests play, they sometimes put it in their deck just to try and thin the deck out from being like effectively a 30 card deck to a 29 card deck. But you're paying two mana at some point along the, the line to do that. That's a two mana spell that sees a bit of play. Which kind of implies that the... The one mana left over from this uh, four mana five five, the two mana thriving shadows, goes into reducing the spell or reducing a spell that you draw by five. That's really good. That's a really solid effect. So I, I think this cosmonaut is actually pretty solid, to be honest with you. Now, obviously, the intention here is to hit something pretty big. Nebula is probably the one you really want to hit. It is somewhat unfortunate that with a nebula, if you played cosmonaut on ten. You would need to coin out the nebula to play it since it would be a four mana spell you could conceivably put a coin generator in your shaman deck not completely crazy uh you could put this in with wish upon a star star as well especially if you are running this big spell shaman deck and you haven't got lots of cheap spells in your deck it probably means you have minions in your deck instead in which case wish upon a star gets more and more value the more and more minions you put in your deck uh, and with this at uh, turn nine even you can Cosmonaut into Wish Upon a Star and just play the Wish Upon a Star immediately and then turn your Cosmonaut into a 7-8 as well because it hits the battlefield. All in all, you've played like 10, uh, 10 9 mana for a 7-8 and giving the Wish Upon a Star effect to everything else in your hand and deck. That's a pretty good deal as well. I've not mentioned it yet, but Pack the House is also a big spell that's existing in Shaman. If you were trying to run this with some of the Overload support we're going to get to in a moment... Uh, this is an overload card that could meet that criteria of that pool of cards. And it generates you a lot of stats, potentially, on turn 9 again. You play your Cosmonaut, you reduce Pack the House by 5. You can play that as a 2 cost. You get a 5-5 five, five in stat line, plus 4 minions of the average stat line of a 6, 5, 4, and 3 cost minion. 
It's a lot of numbers. You are still overloading on that, so you're going to have to pay for it a little bit down the line, but not completely crazy. Uh, there are some other cards as well that you might want to run with the Cosmonaut, or you feel like you could run it. And they're namely spells that are 5 costs, because then you can play it on the turn you play the Cosmonaut, regardless. Jive Insect, for example, you could play a 7 mana rag effectively if you hit the cosmonaut with the rag effect do i think seven mana rag would see playing standard uh no i don't think it would to be honest with you so i think that's a bit of a pipe dream but maybe if you're playing again this highlanderish deck or you're just playing some sort of control value shaman deck you might have a token up of something or you've pushed the button at some point and you can just jive insect the button for nothing i might surprise your opponent with eight damage to the face at some point you can hit this with a wave of nostalgia as well to turn it into a zero mana transform all. I'd probably say this card isn't seen that much play in the, the control variant of the deck. It's more in an aggro token variant. But the option is there to turn it into a zero cost spell. Uh, and then finally, again, if you multi-class with the, the Taurus, you could get a death roll that costs zero. Boy, would that be fun. Your opponent summons. It's like, ha ha, this is the, the super Hearthstone spacecraft I've been building all game. And then you just Cosmonaut, draw a death roll, and just fucking munch it. And just kill them with it. That would be good. That is content. So, I like the idea of that. So, I, I, I think, honestly, Big Spell Shaman, not completely crazy. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Now, I will say you have to be slightly careful with this interaction, though, which is why I've got it on here. If Cosmonaut reduces a spell and you don't play the spell before you play Lunar Trailblazer, Lunar Trailblazer will nerf the spell. It will send it back to a five cost. Because again, Lunar doesn't hit the highest cost spell. It's a random spell. So you always have that chance if you have the, you know, let's say you have a two cost big spell in your hand and you have the nine cost one. You might low roll and hit the two cost with Lunar, in which case pretty big sad times for that so as long as you're aware of it and you're careful about it and to be honest with you the discount is so big on the cosmonauts that you've got a pretty good chance you're going to be able to play it before you play the lunar trailblazer and not have that issue just don't fall into that uh, mistake by the way we still have some more support planetary navigator two mana three two drain eye battle cry the next drain eye you play costs two less but it has overload two okay this is an interesting card Obviously, cards that make things cost two less are strong. We have seen them, and some of them we are still seeing. Raging Fell Screamer isn't seeing much play right now, but I think it was in very briefly Window Shopper Demon Hunter, or some variants of it at least, to reduce the cost of demons in your deck by two, which meant that you could play big demons earlier, which was a big you know improvement in tempo on that turn it's a big tempo swing on that turn now as a punishment for these cards you normally got understated for the turn that they were played on four mana four four in standard not very good however if you're playing on turn five like a seven cost demon you're normally more than making up for that or at least if the card was good you'll be making up for that on that turn uh stone pike battle ramps are a little bit playing some beast hunter decks uh this was that interesting situation where it was a death rattle card which is kind of fast because of rush so you could kill the death rattle minion on the turn you played it and that reduced the cost of a beast in your hand by two it was kind of like a four damage spell that reduced the beast by two and it's sort of a little bit of play and actually currently in the elemental mage deck aqua archivist is seeing some play that is a two mana two two elemental that reduces the next elemental you play by two uh, and that's obviously good in a tempo deck where you're playing elementals every single turn. So just on the the, the card, as long as the drain eye support is there, reducing a minion by two is a pretty good deal. And two mana three two isn't necessarily understated for two. That's about the average stat line you would expect. Now, obviously, the big downside is the overload two that is next to it, which means that you are getting the benefit earlier and typically you want benefits faster than longer hence why overload actually works as kind of like a mechanic you get a good card earlier you pay for it later but that's fine because you kind of like have out tempoed your opponent on that earlier turn which means you have the advantage at that moment in time and sometimes you can like trade that in such a way that is more beneficial to you than your opponent like you're just playing ahead effectively uh, planetary navigator lets you do that it lets you play ahead on the next turn but you're going to have to pay for that once you've played the cards with the overload two and overload two is a pretty brutal effect so I, I think all in all the card would potentially be weak however there are some strong combos with it as we'll get to in a moment uh playing this on turn two by the way there are a few five cost drain eye in the game that you could just play onto three 
you play your 2 mana 3 2. The next turn, you play your Farsi and Nabundo. That is a 3 mana 6 4. That's pretty good stat line for 3 mana. And it has a death rattle on it that gives you a location, which maybe on the turn that you're overloading allows you to get a bit of extra value that lets you survive through that overload turn. Or at least stops you taking a huge amount of like tempo loss on that turn. Ace Wayfinder as well. Perhaps you play your Ace Wayfinder, you get two bonus effects on the Ace Wayfinder. It comes out as a 3 mana 5 5 with two keywords. And then on the next turn, on turn 4. You're obviously overloaded too, but you can then at least play a two-cost Drain that gets two bonus effects, so it gets a little bit of a buff to it. Makes up a bit for the overload, so I don't think this is crazy. The one that really, like, potentially is going to be the Backbreaker. You know, pick him up, drop him on your knee, hear the sound as the man's back snaps, is Lunar Trailblazer. I've mentioned it a few times now that there are ways in uh, Shaman to discount the mana cost of this, if you play Planetary Navigator on two, on turn three, you can play Lunar Trailblazer for three mana, which reduces the cost of one of your big spells to three. Now, I will say, if you have the coin on four, you could coin out a Wish Upon a Star. You could coin out a Nebula. That is really frightening, especially a Nebula. A Nebula on turn four is just GG. I don't think any deck comes back from that. Maybe like... Shaman, not Shaman, Priest could do it if Control Priest was actually a, a good deck right now. They could possibly get back and maybe Control Death Knight. They're like the only two that I think would get back from this. But two 8-8s, I keep calling it 8-8s, two 8-cost minions with Taunt and Elusive. On four, frightening. It does require you to have the coin, and it's hard to generate a coin in Shaman in between all of this stuff that is going on. But either way, if you're doing this on turn five, you're basically what big spell mage is doing right now breaking someone's back on turn five occasionally so uh, if you can hit this high roll semi-consistently uh this deck will be a real thing like this this is scary like nebula and four is really scary nebula and five is still really scary so uh yeah it, it really is just can this class be carried by nebula like uh tsunami does to big spell mage because tsunami does push attack in and damage in fast nebula probably doesn't do that it depends on the eight costs you get to be fair but there's a decent chance it's just going to be a stat line still with taunt and the lucy so you have to break through it but maybe you can play around it a little bit easier than the big spell mate check also there's probably a little bit more support for that deck to keep recasting nebula that is easier to fulfill than farsi and nabundo is also worth mentioning again i've kind of like alluded to this so many times now that this is the first of the cards with like an overload like keyword on it. There are cards existing in Shaman right now that have overload benefits like Flowrider. You could get a, a copy of a spell in your deck. For example, a big spell in your deck to get another one to cast off at some point. Again, this can go towards Jazz Bass to uh, get a big mana discount on a future turn. Thorin is also something that you could seemingly do to... Let, let's say you don't play this on two, you play it on three instead. You could then use Thorin the turn after. So on four, you'll play the Draenei. And on five, you'll have three mana left over. You could use Thorin to unlock the mana crystals and draw you some cards in the process. The final one I've mentioned here, but I actually don't think it works with this, but I don't actually know for certain. So let me know in the comments below. You could put Inza in one of these decks if there was enough overload support for it to reduce the cost of all, all overload cards. I don't think it works on the Planetary Navigator effect because it gives the minion overload after it's played. Whereas Inza, I think, is overload cards that are in your hand cost one less. So I pretty certain you won't get the mana discount on it just because of the ordering of the minion. Uh, still, though, if there were other overload cards out there, yeah, maybe you'd run Inza. It's probably too slow, but I, God, I like the card art on the card, okay? I like the card art. Uh, anyway, we've been mentioning these overload cards. How about First Contact? Another Shaman spell. One mana. Okay, not a big spell, but it's a, a spell. Summon two random one-cost minions. Overload one. A uh, little bit boring, to be honest with you. Potentially quite strong. It's kind of like Boogie Down. Mm, not that one. This one, though. OG Boogie Down used to summon you two one-cost minions that were from your deck. And if you could finale, you would give them taunt now first contact is two mana cheaper on the spell you're getting two one cost minions but they are random not from your deck which is a big deal because you obviously put 
good one cost minions in your deck and not bad ones. The also important thing was it's fairly easy to finale boogie down early in the game. You just play it on three. Uh, and then you'd also get taunt on top of it, which was a pretty big deal. And actually, the first contact then has a downside of overload one, which means you have to pay for it down the line. Uh, all in all, I think this card is pretty weak. You might want to run it in some sort of like tokeny zoo deck, as we'll get to in a moment. Anyway, in terms of like one cost, I'm not going to go through the entire pool of one drops. There are some really high, high rolls potentially, like Catch of the Day, for example, would be very solid to get a 3 3 stat line on first contact. You could hit Rangari Scout as well. There's a lot of Discover cards in Shaman. That is a lot of value, potentially. Chips Terurgian as well, if you're playing some sort of tokeny deck, which you might want to run this in, would give those tokens one extra health to make them a little bit harder to remove. Not crazy. More likely, though, you're going to hit stuff like Noxious Cadaver or Adaptive Amalgam or the Corridor Sleeper, even. Basically, I think you're going to, on average, hit 1-2 or 2-1 stat line, which, by the way, is still 1-mana, like, 3-3 three, three with an Overload 1. That approaches the realms of, like, the quality of something like Catch of the Day. Catch of the Day isn't really seeing any play. However, First Contact has the advantage that it's in Shaman, and there is a token deck in Shaman right now that is seeing play. It's Wave of Nostalgia Shaman, the Evolved Shaman deck. Maybe this card just sees some play in that deck as something that you cast it before you play the wave. Maybe you do this on six. It gives you two more one drops, and then you just wave and turn it into legendary minions. Very, very reasonable to be honest with you. So I do see a world where this sees play. Also worth noting, I've not really said this yet for spell bursts, but cheap spells, very good for spell bursts. Play your first contact with like a Nexus Prince Jafar, for example, in the deck. You can spell burst it very easily on four. And by the way, Shaman and Warrior, for that matter, have Backstage Bounce, which can also copy the Shafar effect. It's not as fluid as the Rogue variant because they don't have as many ways to bounce the cards back. Uh, but, you know, they could do it too if they really wanted to. Uh, I don't think this is a realistic example, by the way. But first contact being a cheap spell, good for the uh, the spell bursting capability. Probably not good though in the big spell deck, as it might get hit by the the drain. I reduce the mana cost or set the mana cost of this minion stat. You don't want to turn this into a five mana card, for example. Uh, also, finally, if you go into the hunter uh, tourism industry, there are some one cost card supports in hunter as well. So you could potentially use a pet parrot to get more first contacts, which you could then use to wave nostalgia down the line. So not completely crazy. The next archetype we're going to get for shaman was the one that was alluded to in the the accidental deck reveals for the the creators. They mentioned there was going to be some sort of space rock shaman. And here it is. Ultraviolet Breaker. 3 mana, 3, 2 elemental. Battle cry. Deal 3 damage to an enemy minion. Shuffle 3 asteroids into your deck. And the asteroid, as you can see from this token that has been hit by asteroids on my screen right now. Sorry, my cutting out wasn't very good on this one. Uh, it's a spell that is cast when drawn. Does 2 damage to a random enemy. Uh, okay. The card itself, Ultraviolet Breaker, is... Holy Smite, which is 3 damage to an enemy minion. Actually, Holy Smite is to any minion, but I'll, I'll treat it as the same for the sake of argument, which is effectively a one mana effect. And then you're getting 3-2 stats, which is pretty solid for a 2-drop, and they are bundled together, which normally makes things better. So actually, I think deal 3 damage to an enemy minion on the 3-2 elemental maybe might have snuck into some elemental lists for Shaman. It would have been pretty close. It was fairly weak, but if the situation arose where you needed to fight for board, this would be a pretty solid card. However, this does shuffle three asteroids into your deck, which will give you some value down the line. Kind of the important thing about these asteroids is how much value down the line are you going to get from them? Well, it depends on how easy it is to shuffle more of them into your deck, aka how much asteroid support is there? You may have also clocked on right now if you watch the, the second reveal, I think it was, where we went through all the neutrals. There was a card called Moonstone Mauler that was revealed, and this is also part of the same package, but from the neutral side of things, this shuffled three asteroids into the deck that also dealt two damage to a random enemy when drawn, so... Okay, there are two cards now shuffling enemy, sorry, asteroids into the deck, and they're both elementals. Get what I'm getting at? This is potentially another way to play elemental shaman, probably. You are probably still tempering elemental turn after turn after turn, but also in between the minions, you're getting damage from your deck at spontaneous intervals. 
depending on how many asteroids you can put into your deck. It's kind of like the reverse of the Plague Death Knight deck, where you try to hit the critical mass of plagues in your opponent's deck to kill them. You're trying to hit the critical mass of asteroids in your own deck to kill your opponent. Now, the real question is how many asteroids is that? And to be honest with you, hold my hands up, I don't know the answer. It really depends on the meta, so to speak. Just on a baseline, your opponent has 30 health, right? At least when Renathal rotates out, your opponent will have 30 health, unless they're a Death Knight, where they might have more. But 30 health, generally speaking. That means you need to cast 15 of these bad boys without hitting a minion, because it hits random enemies, to kill your opponent with asteroids. I think that is a somewhat unrealistic expectation. If you're going to just go for, like, asteroid damage in general, I think at 2 damage per asteroid, you'd actually be getting into the ballpark of, you know, you'd probably have to do, like, 30 asteroids to kill them with 2 damage asteroids, which is an awful lot of asteroids. Now, obviously, you can run this with the current Elemental Shaman support, which has stuff like Lamplighter and Scar in it to finish them off. So I think that's the actual situation you're meant to do. You're playing slightly less well-statted minions than the, in the current Elemental Shaman list, but... In the future, you'll get those asteroids that will help you put extra damage onto your opponent that hopefully kills them slightly quicker than the current version of the deck does. We do have more support, by the way, for this. Belide Behemoth. Form on a 3-6 elemental. Battlecry, your asteroids deal one more damage this game. Spell burst, shuffle three of them in the deck. Okay. I, I see you, like, discount Incendius. <laughs> so Incendius, you know, this is the classic legendary that put eruptions into your deck, which did damage to all enemies. And at the end of the turn, Incendius would improve the eruptions. And if you get any other Incendiuses down the line, you could further improve the eruptions that way. But like Behemoth, you can do the same thing, but it's not an end of turn effect. It's a battle cry effect instead. So uh, you do have to jump through more hoops to get the, the additional upgrades off that being said incendius normally doesn't live on the board for more than a turn anyway to be fair it normally doesn't need to live for more than a turn on the board but that is just the way that hearthstone works nowadays uh so yeah blight beam would turn these asteroids into three damage to a random enemy at which point you're like okay well i was saying earlier that probably you have to do like 60 ish damage with like random effects over the course of a game to kill your opponent with asteroids now they're doing three that takes the number down to like towards 20 asteroids instead which is still a lot but more palatable especially when you can finish your opponent off with other damage now i will say there is one pretty big downside to the blind beam off and it's actually the fact that it's a spell burst effect i do believe a cast when drawn effect on an asteroid would trigger the spell burst effect it does require you then to draw some cards in your shaman deck not crazy i do appreciate that it's a very reasonable expectation however if you don't have just draw a card in your shaman deck your elemental shaman deck you're probably not going to be running too many spells in that deck i know elemental shaman does run i think it runs more spells than elemental mage does but typically to meet the requirement of playing an elemental every single turn you load the deck with way more minions than spells that makes sense right so there's a reasonable chance that you might not be able to spell burst this Belide Behemoth. And actually, I think one of the big spells they run is the... Oh god, what's it called? It's the one which buffs the minion and then draws a card of the same type. I think that's the big one that they run in that deck. And they mainly run it for improving the tempo state of the board, because you get a buff on the minion. It's a pretty reasonable buff for the spell cost. Also drawing a card, which unfortunately is a minion. It's an elemental. Which means you won't draw an asteroid. Not that you would need it because you already spell bursted it, but it's it doesn't quite work quite hand in hand. Like the the cogs are getting close, but you can feel some teeth like bashing against one another. Now there is some stuff you could do with this to make the asteroids like turbocharge. You could shudder block this thing to get the battle cry to go off three more times to get three extra damage on your asteroids, turning them into effectively bombs instead of asteroids now i will say they are bombs that don't just hit the opponent's face they can hit minions but that's a pretty spooky state for the board game to be in i do appreciate at that point you're probably looking at 10 ish asteroids to have a pretty good chance of killing your opponent now i will also say this the mass on this doesn't quite work out the way i'm just spitballing it because obviously as you're doing more and more damage it sort of doesn't matter to the minion because if the minions are 1-1, one, one, it will just eat the 9 damage. If you've got an asteroid to 9 damage, for example. Which isn't really helpful to your cause. So, if you're playing into token deck, for example, the, the asteroids are just going to keep falling into tokens and 
maybe they're big asteroids but they're just going to soak up the damage and you're not going to get that many to the face so it's a pretty nice counterplay into this deck also worth mentioning you could bounce this card back to your hand in which case you'll get the bath cry off also if you play a spell in between this you can reset the spell burst to get six asteroids back into your deck do i think playing a it's actually a 10 mana combo plus whatever the spell costs or the two spells cost do i think that is worth it no i think that's a huge temple loss i think you'll just lose the game doing this so i, I don't think that is worth it i think you just accept the belight beam off gives you one extra asteroid damage you'll put two of them in your deck you'll get to a, a, a maximum of four damage and you'll be happy with it unless you can generate an elemental by some other means you might luckily generate one of these but for the most part you'll just accept your four and be happy with it there is some more support for this deck as well it's meteor storm a nature shaman spell at six mana deal five damage to all minions shuffle five asteroids into your deck okay that's a lot of asteroids and actually five damage to all minions is dragonfire potions effect this was a five mana spell and we're seeing a lot of play in a lot of control decks obviously the intention was you put this in your control deck with some dragons in it so they weren't affected by the dragonfire potion but to be honest with you if you're playing a control deck you didn't care you're probably not playing too many small minions out there you just want something that is anti-aggression uh dragonfire met the bill for a lot of decks obviously it also has this disadvantage if you play into a dragon deck that it did nothing but uh for the most part if you weren't playing into a dragon deck and there were a decent number of decks around that time that weren't dragons it was effectively five mana five damage to all minions meteor storm has that you know amount as well but you're paying a one mana tax for putting five asteroids into your deck i think it's a relatively competitive stat line i don't think it's terrible my big concern of this though is the as i kind of like i've mentioned the elemental shaman deck normally is a tempo matchup and especially since you're probably still going to want to put scar or lamplighter in your deck to help get you over the line which means you want to play elementals every turn which means you don't really want to play spells every turn it also means that you always want to be putting elementals on the board which means you're probably gonna have elementals on the board for the most part of the game do you want to do five damage to all your elementals no this sort of implies and this is a very much control oriented card whereas the typical elemental shaman decks are tempo the the expectation of this asteroid variant is that you're going to play it more as a slower value deck or a combo deck even and I think if you don't run Lamplighter or Scar in this variant of the deck, it just won't work. I think you need that extra mm, to get you over the line. Otherwise, you can just play around the asteroids a little bit too easily. So, yeah, I, I just don't really see it. Uh, there is some other fun stuff you can do. You can Farsi and Nabundo, uh, the Meteor Storm, to have this threat. A bit like I mentioned with the, the Tumbleweed that your opponent always knows that you have five damage to all minions so it makes them not want to ever build a board because it's effectively a waste of mana and you can kind of lock them in place with that you can do the same thing with meteor storm as well but for six mana instead of seven on the tumbleweed cosmonaut as well could draw this as a one mana spell if you wanted to run the Dre Knight into the the uh, asteroid deck and i think there are some like i know hearthstone isn't like it, it's not printing the cards and say okay these have to go into this deck there's normally some degree of overlap between multiple different archetypes and you can kind of plug and play them in together there is some sort of like hints that the plug and play was meant to be like the Dre Knight and the asteroids could also go together but i'm not seeing the full picture of that but anyway you could cosmonaut this it turns into a one mana spell uh it is good but again you have the downside that if you put the cosmonaut on the board he's a five five you don't really want to meet your stone your own cosmonaut because then you've effectively paid eight mana for meteor storm which ain't worth it all in all the package of the asteroids is meteor storm belied behemoth ultraviolet breaker moonstone mola and obviously the asteroids themselves you could like you know fill this out with stuff like the trusty companion the card i couldn't remember the name of before and some of the other elemental shaman support i just don't fully see it though i i, I just think that the current version of the deck is going to be more consistent and better maybe this gets you over the line one turn sooner if you're very lucky with the asteroids put into your deck and the asteroids drawn but i'm just not entirely convinced by it to be honest with you, especially the meteor storm which i just don't think works particularly well with the other cards out there just to like put home the point of this why wouldn't you just do this with incendius instead there's a, a, a meme combo on the ladder right now which actually isn't that bad i think from a deck point of view i think it's like a tier three deck at the very least where you play a shutter block 
Then one turn later, you play Incendius that puts 15 eruptions to your deck, which, by the way, hit not just single targets, they hit everything on your opponent's side of the board. You put 15 of those into the deck. Actually, more than 15. You put a bunch of those into the deck. And you Gaslight Gatekeeper to shuffle your deck the turn afterwards with the Shudder Block Mini. You cycle your entire hand multiple times. You effectively draw all of the eruptions. They all go off. Your opponent normally has 30 health. You have more than 15 eruptions in the deck. And it kills your opponent. That is kind of like the combo. At the very least, it will do a huge chunk of damage and basically put your opponent on guaranteed lethal in a turn or two time. You could just do this rather than go through the asteroid-like shenanigans. I think the asteroid deck only works if you can play it as a tempo deck, which you can't really do with this deck. You have to play it as more of a control combo deck where you're really looking for these three distinct pieces also with the asteroids we have had these cast when drawn cards that deal damage the plagues for example which still are in standard they did damage to the face bleeds which went into your deck dealt damage to your opponent's face agonies caused them to take fatigue damage which would you know take up and up and up that went to their face bombs went into your opponent's deck Big damage to the face. Do you get the picture now? The asteroid's not necessarily always going to the face. Is just such a slow... It, it just slows down this whole process even more. And to be honest with you, a lot of these decks you can get under them anyway with aggressive decks. That's kind of one of the weaknesses of the Bomb Warrior decks. Is the weakness of the Plague Death Knight decks. You could just sneak under them and get your aggro stuff off before they could set their combos up to put enough plagues into the deck that you would eventually die. So I kind of see it closer to something like an Acorn type card, or the cards that generated Acorns, or the Grain Crate card from Death Knight right now. These cards, to be fair, did both see a little bit of play as well, but it was mainly because of their stats as minions, rather than them being, you know, two damage. But I kind of see, like, you know, two damage if it hits a minion is effectively summoning one of these guys and then trading it into something else. It's just super slow, and it's just very weak compared to the other gimmicks of shuffling stuff into your deck that does damage I, I i just don't see it working as a mechanic uh, we don't have a few other cards that kind of sit like outside the boundaries of these two decks and could just do anything uh triangulate two mana shaman spell discover a different spell from your deck shuffle three copies of it into your deck wow this is a really good card i think it's kind of like gang up but for spells uh, and actually better than gang up in a sense that for gang up you had to pick a minion now it could be on the opponent's board as well but Normally, you'd have to play the minion yourself because you want to gang up one of your own minions. Often, this sort of play in mill decks with Cold Light uh, Oracle, right? Is that what it's called? Wait, what were you called? The, the, the mill that draws two cards, or both players draw two cards, that's the one you normally ganged up with some sort of mill deck. You had to pay the mana cost for the minion as well on top of the gang up. So that, like, it was like a two card combo where you had to pay a little bit of extra mana to do it. Triangulate, you find the spell from your deck. You don't have to spend the mana on the spell in your deck at that moment you just immediately get the effect off for two that's a pretty strong effect and actually just again the effect is thrive in the shadows with an upside and thrive in the shadows see some play so i don't see any reason why triangulate wouldn't see play and control and slower versions of the shaman deck are pretty strong right now they're reasonable fun decks to play the real question is, what are the spells, though, that you're going to target? Obviously, one of the things you could do is put more nebulas into your deck, which means that you could, like, for example, you could nebula and reduce it with Luna. You could then shuffle the nebulas back into your, your deck. So, like, you triangulate, just go nebula. You play Luna. You still have nebulas in your deck. You could then play a Cosmonaut going forwards and get a nebula from your deck. And then down the line, when you're at that mana cost anyway, you can just freely play nebulas as you wish. That seems reasonable for Big Spell Shaman, especially since I think they've only got, like, maybe four spells that you'd be pretty happy to play at the big, big amount of mana. You'd probably prefer to put three Nebulas in your deck if you can, so not completely crazy to triangulate a big spell. You could also do it on something like Meteor Storm. Put a ton of Meteor Storms in your deck. Basically say, fuck your opponent, you're not playing minions this game, I'm just going to keep smashing them with Meteors. Okay, this again leans more to this control asteroid deck, but not completely crazy. Uh, by the way, you could also just hit the asteroids themselves. Spend two mana, you discover an asteroid. I believe it will just instantly cast when you put, would put it into your hand to do two damage. And you put three more asteroids into your deck. 
if you're trying to hit this critical mass of like i don't know what it is as i said but like 20 to 30 asteroids maybe you might have to use triangulate to do this also key on this card by the way it does a difference so you can't triangulate a triangulate they thought that through ladies and gentlemen uh one other thing if you want like insane value you could also put this in the galaxy's lens we've not talked about this for a while you spend your two mana on triangulate you pick a card in your deck you shuffle three copies it into your deck you then use the galaxy's lens to try and discover the same one and put three more copies into the deck so i think you'll have five in the deck and two in hand that's a lot of value like that's going to extend the game out you're obviously going to pick some pretty big impactful valuable card and yeah that's going to be really really strong when you eventually draw through all of them back breaking even all right, the final card. And this is, oh boy, is this a card. Murmur, six mana, six, six elemental. Your battle cry minions cost one, but they immediately die after being played. Okay, that's a pretty big effect. I, I normally try to peg cards to something, but I can't peg this to anything. This is just such a humongous effect. I will say, just... I, I, this is jumping the gun a little bit i think this card isn't going to be as strong in standard as it's going to be in wild and actually if you look look around social media right now around the hearthstone community most people are talking about how this card is going to break the game in wild the real reason why this card is going to work and i've kind of like mentioned this before when i talk about like battle cries and the sat lines of battle cry minions a lot of battle cry minions the mana cost is really associated with the battle cry rather than the stat line the stat line doesn't matter quite as much Shaman has a few of these examples. Scar, for example. Do you really ever care about the stat line of Scar? Sometimes you do, of course, but for the most part, you're really... You're playing this for the damage, right? Would you like to play one mana Scars? Maybe. I mean, it actually depends on the tempo of Shaman deck. You sometimes find just playing the seven mana because you're going to get lethal anyway. But if you could play, you know, lots of elementals and draw through all of your deck, sure, you'd like Scars to cost one instead. The stat line doesn't matter as much. Similar light lamplighter. Again, you're really playing this more for the damage than the stats. Sure, you'll eventually have the stats on the board and your opponent's gonna have to deal with them, but you wouldn't be playing the 4 out of 4 3 if it wasn't doing potentially like 8 damage to the opponent's face as well. Alexstrasza, very classic card from Hearthstone. It's nice that it has an 8 8 stat line, but the big thing was putting your opponent's health to 15. And by the way, I've put these together very intentionally. Let's say you play your Murmur. And you're playing Elemental Shaman with an Alexstrasza in it because of this combo. And you play on turn... I think it'd be on turn 6 you could do this. Alexstrasza for 1 mana, by the way. Oh, let's say 7 actually because Murmur you're going to play on 6. On 7 you play Alexstrasza. You play Lamplighter. You play Scar. As soon as you play the Elementals every single turn, that is lethal. You kill your opponent. Uh, with a simple three-card combo, which gets a four-card combo with Murmur, you can just kill your opponent. That's pretty good, right? Now, this is kind of where I get to where I don't think it's going to be as good in Standard. I can't think of too many ways in Standard to truly break the game faster than that. And actually, around turn seven is probably when Scar is normally killing decks with the normal list of Elemental Shaman anyway, which kind of makes me think that it's not going to work in standard but I, i've definitely seen like people talking about the cards in wild and i can see why wild is having a little bit of a a crisis right now there are then some other cards which aren't you know just like i'm gonna win the game instantly doing this cosmonaut is a card again where the effect is probably as big as the stat line one mana reduce draw a spell and reduce its cost by five is fine that's a pretty good card no ceaseless expanse that's a battle cry by the way one mana destroy all of the minions all right pretty good pretty good I, I like it avatar of hearthstone the new card one mana open a standard pack you play all the cards that's potentially a lot of value on the field now you can lower all the standard packs by a lot to be honest with you so it's still pretty risky but it's a legitimate reason to play avatar of hearthstone it's a legitimate win condition you play murmur you play an avatar on seven you high roll the pack and get a lot of stats into the board uh, and then you can also keep playing one mana battle cries after that that give you other strong effects and you can see a world where you just snowball into victory there are some cards that don't work quite as well with murmur like shining sentinel for example you will get the copy of the battle cry minion but the first battle cry will die as i understand it in which case you've played seven mana for a three seven taunt elusive that's not great also any battle cry that's like a transformative effect on the minion like siamat 
Not very good with Murmur, because you're just going to instantly kill the card before you can do anything with it. So, be careful when you're building your Murmur deck in Standard to not have stuff like Seamat in it, because it's a waste of time. There are other advantages to having the Battlecries getting reduced to 1 as well, beyond just the effect of the Battlecries being strong at 1 cost. Things like Red Giant, which isn't a Battlecry card, but you want to play adjacent cards, you can way easier play adjacent cards when they cost 1. So you could conceivably play all these 1 cost Battlecry cards, have some sort of draw engine in your deck, which I'll get to in a moment, and play a Red Giant onto the board. Maybe not as a 1 cost, but even like as a 2 or a 3 cost, because you're going to have mana to spare probably. I just drop an 8-8 eight, eight on the board around 7. It might just be that Murmur, rather than just OTKing someone on 7, it just generates this huge value dump around there that breaks the back of a lot of decks. Kind of like what the, the spaceships are meant to do, but better. <laughs> Maybe that's what is going to happen. Uh, I think this is a bit more of a low roll, but you could try and do something with the Replicator and Aether as well. One of the reasons this card isn't working at all right now in Standard is that it's very hard to combo off a 5-mana minion because it's a 5 mana minion. It leaves you only 5 mana to play with. There's also not a lot of great 5-5s, five or I guess 5 attack minions right now in standard from my aware. And also in the Replicator and Aether, you need then a 1 drop and an 8, or a 1 attack and an 8 attack minion as well to get the full value from it. It becomes a lot more palatable to do this if you reduce the cost of all the other minions to 1. You spend the Replicator and Aether 5 mana cost line, and then you start playing 1 cost with 5 attacks, multiples of them and Replicator and Aether copies them. They then die, but the, the Replicator and Aether still copy them, so you do get the stat line on the board in some means. I'm pretty certain, by the way, that's the way that works, because it does say that, well, Replicator and Aether will be on the board first, so I think it will resolve before the Murmur effect that kills it. I'm actually not 100% certain on that. The, 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 the uh, what's his name? The timings on things in Hearthstone, I find it a bit confusing sometimes, but I'm pretty certain you'll get the, the copy with Replicator and Aether. Either way, I think the combo is too slow. To get to this card, like I said it was hard to peg this card to anything. The one I think I would peg it to is Quasar, which is funnily enough the card that was revealed yesterday. I think Quasar has the chance to break Rogue. It's a transformative effect that is going to turn all of Rogue's deck into very cheap cards. And Rogue is the class that is very good at drawing lots of cards. And also the class that has a lot of good cheap cards as well. Now, this card, Murmur... It does the same as Quasar. It's going to reduce the cost of all your cards. I say all. A lot of your cards to one. Because you're going to mainly put Battlecry cards into your deck, right? The big problem between the two is, is that Rogue, very good at drawing cards. Shaman, actually right now, pretty good at drawing cards. Normally, it's not great at it, but actually this cycle is pretty good at it. There are options, for example, Fairy Tail Forest. You can draw a Battlecry minion. And you can actually reduce it down to zero if you really wanted the full discounts. That's pretty good as well. Uh, Trusty Companion to let you find another minion of that type. You're probably going to put like, multiple elementals in the deck, for example. That's another way to draw a card. Hagatha has a battle cry. It's a one mana minion now. You get to draw the two spells. They go into battle cry minions that cost one. And you can play them to play the spells. That's a pretty good way to cheat out a spell effect. For example, you know, the... Oh my god, I forgot the name. The the I want to call it Quasar, but it's not Quasar. The the, the big shaman spell that, of this set. You can cheat that out with Hagatha for effectively two mana. That's a pretty good deal, no? And it just even basic stuff like ancestral knowledge. So shaman isn't like you know lacking ways to draw. The big I think issue is that you are still spend, spending mana on these turns. Rogue potentially can spend no mana on, like, their turns and just go infinite and draw through the deck. I don't think Shaman can quite draw through their entire deck. I think they can chunk through it, like, significantly, like, 10 or so cards. Maybe even more than 10 cards, but there is a limit on Shaman. Now, that limit might be enough for them to still beat your opponent down with it. And actually, I do think that is probably true. I think you could still beat your opponent down with Murmur decks. And I think you could beat them down with Quasar decks as well. So I kind of do believe that both of them will be viable to some degree. It's really, can you live long enough to get to the Murmur turn? I think it's going to be the big thing about it, uh, which is going to be a lot of smart deck creation. The final thing I want to mention about Murmur is you could run this with the Asteroid Package as well, because realistically, the, the bigger part of these cards are, at least on the minions, of course, is the, the Asteroid side of things. 
I will say there is a big anti synergy with Bull Eyed Behemoth because you can't spell burst it anymore because it will ex instantly explode once you play Murmur. And realistically, you want to put Asteroids into your deck. You really want the spell burst aspect of this. So I don't think this is going to work. Also, you're only discounting one, two, and three mana on these cards with Murmur. It's just not worth it. The stat line's also pretty reasonable on these cards for the mana cost you're spending and the effect you're getting on it. So, uh, yeah, I don't see Murmur, Space Rock, Shaman being a thing, but I do think there'll be a Murmur deck out there, but it'll be something that, like that we've not really seen before. It probably will have an elemental backbone to it, though, is what I'm going to guess. Uh, especially if there are more combos out there, because I've only shown one with Alex Straza and... Lamplighter and Scar. I'm almost certain there is some other way to break the game with Bathcry Minions with Shaman. Assuming they cost one. In standard, by the way, not Wild. I know Wild has like tons of ways of doing it. Wild's key again is going to be living till turn six, which is easier said than done for some decks. Anyway, that is the reveals done for Shaman. This was the penultimate reveals. Next time is the final class. It is Paladin. And we already know it's going to be Libram, so I'm really looking forward to it because I love the archetype. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, don't leave a like and subscribe. Everything helps me out, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.